The Baruch Mezhebush uh, once heard that a chassid who was very ill. So he came to the chassid's house and he taka saw someone who was more of Yenevelt than in this world. On his way out, he told the family, I guarantee you that he will recover. So the family had renewed hope and the Baruch went back home to Mezhebush. The next morning after Shachris, he sent out his Meshadis and he said, could you please go to the town square and find out if there's any news from that town. So the Meshadis went and he heard that the chassid is still on his deathbed. The same thing repeated itself every single day after Shachris, he would go and bring back the same news. One morning the Chassid took his own initiative and he went to town square in the morning and he said, did anyone come from that town? Sure enough, there was a very wealthy woman who had just arrived from that town. So he went to her hotel and he said, what's doing with this and this Chassid? So she said, it happened, yesterday was the Levaya. The Meshadis had no choice, he went back to the Rebbe and he told the Rebbe, Baruch Dainamus. The Baruch turned right around, went into his study, and the Meshadas heard as the Baruch is talking to the Ebishtet. And he tells the Ebishtet, Ebishtet, is the Baruch's betachin and nothing by you? Then it was quiet for a few minutes, and he hears the Baruch talking to himself, and he says, No, it can't be. The Ebishtet would not ashamed my betachin. Comes out of the study and he asks the Meshadis, I want you to please go back to the town square and find if there's more news from our chassid. So he goes back to the town square and he meets uh, someone who just came from the other town and he says, what's doing with so-and-so? So he says, you won't believe this. He had a miraculous turnaround and he's, he's mamash recovering. So the Meshadis goes back to the Baruch and he tells him the good news. So the Baruch was very happy, but not shocked. So the Meshadis says, I didn't understand it. The Baruch says, I'll explain it to you. I knew that as long as I had trust in the Ebishter, this chassid was not going to die. And I also knew that I still had strong betachin, so it couldn't be that he was dead. Then I realized that the Ebishter was testing me to try to destroy my betachin, and the Ebishter sent none other than the Samach Mem disguised in this rich woman. As soon as I realized that, and my betachin remained intact, it was enough to bring this year to the Rufur Shalema. The Baal Shem Tov explains that Leilainu, before the Ebrish to give someone uh, an Isayan, the Ebrish to test the person first by trying to make that Yid lose his Bitochen. The best thing a Yid could do for himself is to hold on to that Bitochen. So today we're going through times where this is, this is vital. Whether it's the worries or anxieties we have of health, Parnassa, what's going to be tomorrow, what's going to be Pesach. What we could do for ourselves is to push it to strengthen our bitachin. It begins by learning about bitachin. The Rebbe encourages us all to learn mechivas al bavis shara bitachin, to learn letters of the Rebbe on the subject of bitachin. They're available in all languages, and also push it to dive into the Eibushter and ask him for that gift of trust in Hashem and the peace of mind that comes along with it. And Meretz Hashem, in the schus of all this, all Yidden will have teiv anir